The Premier League season is over, and there is a summer of change on the horizon. Manchester United have finished eighth, they have failed to qualify for Europe, and the curtain has been brought down on a disappointing nine months. There is a chance to end the year on a high in the FA Cup final, but the league campaign won't be remembered fondly, regardless of what happens at Wembley. There have been a handful of memorable league wins along the way, Scott McTominay's brace against Brentford in October and Kabi Maynou's match winner against Wolves in February come to mind. But United finished closer to Nottingham Forest in 17th than Manchester City. To finish 31 points behind City is not surprising, but it does show the extent of the challenge that lies ahead for Sir Jim Ratcliffe as he approaches his first summer as United co-owner. Sources indicated radical changes would follow Ratcliffe's acquisition of a minority stake, and the boardroom has been shaken up ahead of the transfer window. Omar Barada will start work as CEO after serving a period of gardening leave, and Jason Wilcox has been appointed as technical director. United remain locked in negotiations with Newcastle to appoint Dan Ashworth as sporting director, and he is expected to join at a later date. The elephant in the room is the manager's future needs to be decided, but there will also be significant changes to the playing squad after a dismal, mostly joyless season. The number of departures from United will reach double figures this summer, although there are a few members of the dressing room who are guaranteed to be safe from the chopping block. Andre Onana, Alejandro Garnacho, Kabi Mainu, and Rasmus Hojlund are the only players off limits in the summer transfer window. Though a look at the genuine contenders for this season's Sir Matt Busby Player of the Year award would suggest that List should be added to. United fans seem to unanimously agree that Garnacho, Mainu, Bruno Fernandes, and Diogo Dalo are in contention. Those four players have emerged with the most credit, Hodgland and Onana deserve honorable mentions, from this season, and will compete for the award. Marcus Rashford was crowned United Player of the Season last year, and the announcement on who has picked up the prize this term is expected before the FA Cup Final. To begin with, Fernandez was given the captain's armband last summer, and he's dragged United over the line on multiple occasions this season. His output in the final third may have reduced, but he's become a better all-round player and is the driving force in the midfield. Fernandez hadn't missed a club game through injury in his career until earlier this month, and he's been an ever-present since signing from Sporting Lisbon in January 2020. The 29-year-old has won the award twice already and could make it a hat-trick this season, although his fellow countryman Delote would be another popular winner after claiming back his starting role at right-back and contributing a few important goals along the way. Dalot has returned to form after falling out of favor at the back end of 2022-23 and has managed to avoid injury, one of the most important qualities a player can have. His finish against Brighton on Sunday afternoon was clinical, and he can be content with his performances. Garnacho also has a shout of winning the award. Remarkably, he started his 37th consecutive game against Brighton and has pushed his body to the limits while avoiding injury, which mustn't be easy for a creative player on the wing who attracts fouls from the opposition. Finally, my new has been a breath of fresh air this season since his breakthrough into the first team in November, and it's testament to his quality he's in the conversation for the Player of the Year award despite being absent at the start of the campaign due to injury. My new celebrated his 19th birthday just a few weeks ago, and he plays with the composure of someone with 300 senior appearances in the Premier League. Any of those four players deserves to be crowned player of the season and should be among the first names on the team sheet when the new campaign begins. The heart of United's woes lies a failure to adapt to the evolving landscape of modern football. One of the earliest and most consequential missteps was the club's failure to appoint a director of football in 2013, following Ferguson's retirement. This critical oversight left a leadership vacuum at the club, depriving it of the strategic vision and cohesive direction needed to navigate the turbulent waters of post-Ferguson transition. 
Moreover, the club's decision-making in the transfer market has been characterized by a lack of coherence and foresight. The failure to capitalize on opportunities, such as the appointment of Ralph Rangnick as director of football in 2022, stands as a stark example of United's inability to leverage experienced footballing minds to their advantage. Instead of harnessing Rangnick's expertise and insights, the club relegated him to a peripheral role, squandering the opportunity to benefit from his wealth of knowledge and experience. Furthermore, United's recruitment strategy under various managers has been disjointed and inconsistent, leading to a string of underwhelming signings and missed opportunities. The lack of collaboration and strategic foresight in player acquisitions has left the squad unbalanced and devoid of the quality needed to compete at the highest level. Instead of building a cohesive team capable of challenging for trophies, United has often resorted to short-term fixes and reactionary signings, exacerbating the club's long-term problems. In contrast to their rivals, such as Manchester City and Liverpool, who have embraced collaborative approaches to recruitment and strategic planning, United's insistence on a single manager-centric model has proved to be a hindrance rather than an asset. The club's reluctance to learn from successful models and adapt to changing realities in the footballing landscape has left them trailing behind their competitors, both domestically and in Europe. As United grapples with the consequences of their past mistakes, there is a growing recognition of the need for a fundamental shift in mindset and approach. The recent appointments of Jason Wilcox and Dan Ashworth by INEOS represent a step in the right direction, signaling a renewed commitment to collaboration and strategic planning. However, true progress will require a wholesale transformation of the club's culture and ethos, placing a greater emphasis on long-term sustainability and success. Bruno Fernandes has been named Manchester United's Player of the Month for April. Our numbered eight scored an impressive seven strikes in just six games for Eric Ten Hag's side and also registered a further two assists, proving his weight in gold when it comes to goal contributions. Fending off stiff competition from Harry Maguire and Alejandro Garnacho, Fernandez has stepped up when needed during a vital stage of our campaign. Having now appeared 45 times so far this season, our very own Portuguese Magnifico is more than worthy of the accolade, as voted for by you, the fans. Our progression to the Emirates FA Cup final was also helped by his influence during United's eventual penalties victory, scoring and assisting against Coventry City in normal time, before calmly converting his spot kick when the stakes were high in the shootout. Two more goals rounded off an impressive six appearances in April, as he was once again instrumental in our 4-2 victory over Sheffield United at Old Trafford, and set up a goal for Rasmus Hoyland. The Portugal international also won three Man of the Match prizes, with the boss more than happy with Bruno's output as we reach the season's run-in. He's in very good form, said Ten Hag. I think when we put him in the right position, he finds the right spots. When he's in that position, he makes the right decisions. He can create a lot, score a goal, make assists, 